the Tom Likas Show. That's good. People need to be entertained. They need distraction. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. Look at this story. Dateline Lincoln, Nebraska. (laughs) A 17-year-old boy left by his mother at an Omaha hospital is the 30th child abandoned under Nebraska's safe haven law according to state officials. 17 years old. Mom said, come on, we're going to Nebraska. The boy, oh, he was from Nebraska. From the Omaha area. He was left off at Creighton University Medical Center on Monday morning, according to Todd Landry, Director of Child and Family Services for the Department of Health and Human Services. The state was still investigating the case, and additional details were not available. Nebraska was the last state to enact a safe haven law intended to protect unwanted newborns from being abandoned. But, attention parents or step-parents of unwanted kids, this is great. Says here, some have interpreted the state's law as meaning it could apply to children as old as 18 because it uses the word child and doesn't specify an age limit. Those interpretations take the word child to mean minor, which in Nebraska includes anyone under the age of 19. However, Health and Human Services spokeswoman Jean Atkinson said a separate state law pertaining to juveniles won't let authorities take in children older than 17. The state law opens a special session on Friday to consider revising the safe haven law. Most legislators have already agreed to set an age limit of three days. (laughs) That's kind of sloppy work. (laughs) Come on, everybody. Bring your teenagers. Let's go. That kid who won't listen to you, come on. I was talking to Gary. I'm thinking here, what happens if if they don't amend the law? You know what we do? Let's... (laughs) Let's charter some buses and have all the parents get on with their teenage kids and just take it to Nebraska. Let's go. <laughs> Says here, Landry said an 18-year-old woman left at a Lincoln hospital by her mother on Sunday was not being handled as a safe haven case. Lincoln Assistant Police Chief Jim Pashong. Pashong said the young woman's mother told officials at Bryant General Hospital Medical Center West (laughs) that her daughter, who was adopted, suffers from several disorders, including a learning disability and is bipolar. (laughs) You know what? Too much of a hassle. It's like bringing the puppy back to the pound after, you know, she pees on the carpet. The kid has a learning disability, is bipolar. Here, you take her. Hmm. Says here, the adoptive mother says that the daughter refused to take some medication for some conditions that she has. Uh, she won't listen to her, can't control her. Atkinson, the young woman, Atkinson said the young woman was placed in an emergency shelter and was being offered extra help. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah! That's it. Can't deal with you. You're not going to take your medication. Come on, get in the car with me. I'm going to take a little ride. Your time is up. I'm going to take you down to the police station. Take you down to the hospital. Here we go. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if they had a safe haven law for anybody under 18? And then all the parents out there who are just pissed off with their kids just say, Come on, kids, we're going to get down to the hospital. Here we go. Take you down to the old safe haven. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, this is why I tell people, uh, you know, really think twice before you have a kid. Think twice before you get knocked up. 
you know, I, 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 the, the safe haven law began, and you know, they're, they're in uh, every state in the union now, but at one time they didn't exist at all. And the reason for them was because, you know, you had these 15 and 16 year old girls were getting it drilled into their head that abortion was wrong. Of course, fornicating on prom night, uh, that was not wrong. It was getting pregnant. And so these kids were, you know, uh, not telling anybody they were pregnant and then delivering their baby into the garbage can in the girls' room or whatever, <laughs> delivering them into dumpsters, tossing them into garbage cans, whatever. And so they finally decided you should be able to bring these kids in, no questions asked. But wouldn't it be easier to just not get knocked up in the first place? Wouldn't it be easier to just like, you know, how about you head down to the old Planned Parenthood? And this is the thing I don't understand. Why is it so many people don't ever think about birth control? That they get themselves knocked up? What is that all about? I'm dumbfounded by the number of people I talk to who don't even know what forms of birth control are available. They don't know about family planning clinics like Planned Parenthood. They don't know all the uh, services that are available. They just figure, hey, I'm just going to you know, hump like some savage animal or something. And then whatever happens, happens. You know, anybody who needs to go to a safe haven is just a jerk. Just a boob. If you need to take, if you get knocked up, and then you need to take the, I mean, I'm glad we have these laws. Don't get me wrong. But if you're one of the people who needed to take your kid to a so-called safe haven, you're a moron. You're an absolute moron. Am I wrong? Tom, Tom, Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. That's the shortest commercial break I can remember. That's ridiculous. Out of control. The Tom Likas show. The breaks are shorter. The calls are faster. Uh, your head will spin. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hey, um, just going to call for a long-time listener, first-time caller. Right. Um, just wanted to say I used to work with kids, and um, most of the reason the girls got pregnant weren't because of uh, them just going around, messing around. It was uh, their fathers had, uh, you know, with, um, gang members got around with um, so uh, Well, I, I can barely hear what you're saying. That phone connection is terrible. So I, I imagine what you're saying is their fathers had impregnated them or their boyfriend was a gang member or what have you. Uh, fine. Why aren't you on birth control? Where's the pill? Where's the depot shot? Where's the Norplane? Come on. I mean, if you're out there having... And look, even if your father is taking advantage of you, how about you said, if you can't get out of the house, if you can't call the police, if you, if you can't get out of there, you can't tell anybody, how about you keep yourself from having to go through still another trauma of having a baby? Your boyfriend's a gang member. And by the way, how's, by the way, I'll stick with the stupid moniker for those who have boyfriends who are gang members. What if your boyfriend's a gang member? <laughs> you, you, yeah, you're still stupid. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Sabrina on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Good. You know what? This subject burns me up so much. The thing that I don't understand is that if you decide not to go on the pill or anything like that, you know, you have nine months to decide what to do with the child. What makes it? What makes the person so stupid that after nine months, the split decision is to run and drop them off somewhere? Like that, I just, is beyond me. I, it's just so ignorant to me to do that. Yeah, well, uh, again, I, I think that uh, if, if you've gotten to a point where you have to have a baby and drop them off at the hospital, why go through a pregnancy? Why allow yourself to get pregnant in the first place? I don't understand it. It, it really burns me up. I, I just, I don't, I really don't think it should be allowed. I don't think you should have that. 
because if you're that irresponsible, you should have some repercussion than, you know, just being able to drop the kid off. I think it's ridiculous that we have that law. Well, it's not for the benefit of the irresponsible teenage parents. That's for the benefit of the children who are innocent victims in all of this. Yeah, that's Because true. what was happening is that these these irresponsible jerks would get knocked up in high school and then they, you know, excuse themselves, go to the bathroom, uh, give birth in the stall, and then toss the baby in the garbage can. There needs to be har um, harsher penalties for that type of behavior. And well, I think we have no why. penalties for that type of behavior. None. None. Nobody's being punished. I agree. I love you, Tom. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate Bye. the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Kate on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Um, you know, again, you're right. I, I totally agree with you. I agree with the law that, you know, because um, the baby, it's not the baby's fault, but people are so stupid having babies when they don't understand what's going on. I have my 24-year-old goddaughter who lives in Michigan. She's knocked up. She's living with the baby daddy now. But she actually sent me an email soliciting donations because her baby daddy can't afford to take the day off work when she goes into labor. To have the baby. Well, like, what are the what are the donations for? So that she can she can surprise her baby daddy and give him the day off work so he can be with her at the hospital. Oh my God! Oh, because <laughs> he can't afford to take a day off work. It's like does she know the babies cost money? Clearly not. I, I sent her back an email. I said, uh, "Good luck with that," because she wanted my opinion, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that like the new thing now or something? I don't know. I, I'm just amazed that people think you'll give them money for situations like that. They hook up. They're irresponsible. They hook up with other irresponsible people. Uh, they're broke. They're not able to do anything. And yeah. then uh, they expect you to make up the difference. Yeah, they want me to subsidize. And I, I felt like, well, okay, I'll send emails out to all my friends because I am I have my own business with my um, boyfriend of 12 years that I do not live with. Um, and, you know, I don't get paid days off. So wow. should I send out emails to all my friends to say, we'd really like a day off. Can you, like, donate? Oh, <laughs> God. I hate that. Me too. All right, Kate. All right. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, David. Hey, Tom, how you feeling tonight? Uh, pretty good. Good. Hey, I just got a question, maybe a touch off the subject, but how do you feel about these people foregoing birth control for religious reasons like that show 17 Kids and Counting or 18 Kids and Counting? I haven't seen that show. Well, I, I mean, I think they're, I guess they're Mormon or whatever, but I mean, they use the, you know, Catholics use the same excuse. They say, well, religiously, we're not allowed to use birth control, for, so we'll just have as many kids as possible. Unbelievable. I just, yeah, I just don't understand it. I mean, it's uh, it's it's totally irresponsible, like your last caller was saying, except they're using religious reasons to, to defend it. I don't understand that at all. I don't understand why anybody wants to do that. Uh, to just become a human Xerox machine. Yeah, it's it blows the mind. Yeah, I don't get it. And then to make a reality show out of it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I've been saying for a long time, people need to take some kind of test or some kind of exam. you got to pass something to have kids because there's way too no, many No, that's not going to happen. That not Too many people make a profit for people. I know. Uh, you know, propagating uh, freely, and that's that's what's going to happen. That's, it's going to continue to be legal. Uh, no one will ever, ever take that uh, freedom away. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Lance on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, my man, how are you? Doing okay, Lance. Well, I got I got to say, I am right there with you on, you know, it's not that difficult to, you know, get go to the local uh, convenience store and get, you know, get a rubber uh, or whatever. My wife and I use birth control. I don't see why it's so complicated for people. I don't get it. I talk to these people all the time. I mean all the time. I, it just blows my mind and how easy it is to get uh, birth control. Well, it's everywhere. Uh, for God's sake, go over to Target. Go over to Walmart. 
<laughs> exactly. Go to CVS. Go to Safeway. Go to Vons. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, there's rubbers everywhere. There's rubbers in the bathroom. Uh, put a buck in the machine in the bathroom. There's there's rubbers. Exactly, exactly. My wife used to go to, um, you know, she used to have her own rubbers when uh, when I met her. <laughs> I would never use a woman's rubbers. Uh, well, no, you ne you never know if you know. If you never know if she. That's anything, right. But. And that's why I'm I'm totally there with you. I don't understand why it is that I mean, even guys, guys, if you don't want to be a father, wrap it. Uh, well, I agree with that. And then uh, the, this idea of these girls are getting pregnant, and the, the, like we had the one uh, we talked about a few months ago, who uh, what was she? Uh, 16 or 17 and she was so fat she didn't know she was pregnant until she was like crossing the street and she could feel something exactly and suddenly she was having a baby <laughs> absolutely just amazing it just floors me <laughs> Thank you, Lance. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Audrey on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Audrey. Hi, Tom. Hi. So I just think that we should just mandatorily, once a teenager hits 15, put them on birth control. Well, they don't do that because they don't mandate drugs or surgery for just about anything except the occasional child molester. Right, but I, I see that point, but I also see the fact that I see a lot of people that say, oh, well, I don't want to put them on birth control because I'm afraid it's going to encourage them to have sex. Now, being a teenager is going to, encur it's going to encourage them to have sex. Yeah. I think that if we, you know, if at the age of 15, they don't have to mandatorily maybe go on it, but at the age of 15, they are required to go to a Planned Parenthood or something like that and learn about these things and at least be given the medication or be given the condom so that they have it. Mandatorily, it is given to them. They have to have it. They have to have the appointment. They have to learn about it so that they know this stuff and that they actually have access to it without having to be embarrassed or not know how to go to their parents or whoever to get this stuff done. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I go a step further. In fact, several steps further. Uh, anybody who uses these services should ultimately have to pay for them, even if it takes 50 years. Uh, if you drop your kid off at the safe haven, that's great. Uh, you're going to get a bill for that. I agree. I think that that's absolutely correct. I think that if you choose to have a child, that child is yours forever, regardless if they hit 18. Yeah. That kid is yours. And if you if you leave your kid in a, in a wastebasket, guess what? That's called murder, and you should be going to prison for good. I absolutely agree with you. I mean, why don't we get tough? I don't care if they're 15 or 16. Uh, these little girls are not little girls. They're old enough to, to fornicate. They're old enough to get knocked up. They're old enough to make a responsible decision. And if you're going to be out there, look, you can have an abortion, but if you're going to put a baby in a dumpster and we find out who you are, mm -hmm. why, why would we treat you with anything less than an adult treatment? You should be go You should be going to prison for life. That's it. Goodbye to you. I agree. You know, I'm 28 years old. I wasn't a teenager that long ago. And I know that at 14, I knew exactly what I was doing, just like I did at 16 and 18 and so on. Wow. Audrey, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Janine on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. I love your show, and I cannot agree more with you on this topic I just totally hate people who do not use birth control. Um, I was just saying to a screener how my coworker just got married. She's 25, and she's now three months pregnant. This is a girl who can barely take care of herself. They are thousands of dollars in debt. Uh, they've had to cut off their cell phone several times because they don't have the money to pay for it. She's constantly moving money around in her accounts because she hasn't paid her cards. Her husband works for minimum wage. She's also working for, I don't know, maybe $11 an hour. And now she's um, waiting for a baby. And um, she wasn't raised by her mom, so I don't see how she's going to offer anything to this baby. I was against the whole pregnancy from the beginning, and unfortunately she got mad at me, and now we're not talking. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, so I don't understand this. My sister, that's another one. I think I'm surrounded by 
idiot people just so stupid. She was 18. She got knocked up. And now she's uh, 20 with two kids and has no future whatsoever because she didn't graduate from high school. Absolute yeah. moron. She's an absolute moron. 1-800-5800-TOM. Like is 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likus Show. Tom Mike is showing one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Now thirty kids taken to that safe haven in Nebraska because you can just dump your kids off there at the hospital, no questions asked. Thirty of them, and the latest is an eighteen-year-old or a seventeen-year-old. I mean, this, this is insanity, and you're a real boob if you have to use one of these. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Ryan on the Tom Mike is show. Hello. Hi, right, Tom. How's it going? Great. Good. You know, I just wanted to call about your topic right now. I just jumped in my car, you know, turned on the radio, and I was listening a little bit of what you had to say about these young teenagers having uh, kids and, uh, you know, not taking any responsibility for them. Um, I was 16 years old, and I got a girlfriend. Why did you do that? Well, well I was young and dumb and caught up in the And moment. full of enthusiasm. Yes, I know. So, it, I graduated high school, got a full-time job, I'm doing great for myself, you know, I got a great job, you know, it's just, it's all about making a choice, you know, you, taking the initiative, I mean... Yeah, I but your do, point is, you didn't, why did you make the choice you made in the beginning? Couldn't you use a done. condom? Come on, you never heard of a condom? I did hear of a condom. What made you think you shouldn't use one? Man, I was getting lucky, I just wanted to get laid. <sighs> You know, but, you know, if you're going to do growing up things, you got to take, you know, growing up responsibilities, you know, and I did. Yeah, so. and then ultimately uh, your kid's going to grow up and is likely to end up the same way you did. Well, you know, you learn from your mistakes and you try to guide them away from that. Yeah, you but know? what do you know? What do you know? Well, wear a condom from now on and, you know, she's on birth control. You yeah, know? well, I'll bet your dad told you to use a condom, too. Uh, I didn't have a dad. All right, your mom. Uh, she wasn't there very much, so I mean, I was always out. And neither know, will you be because you, neither will you be because what college have you attended? Uh, just estimating, you know, basically. You, it, you know, I graduated high school. So you know, what? Graduating high school these days is nothing. Nothing. And chances are you'll have to work your ass off the rest of your life, and you won't be around for your kid, and the cycle will continue. Not necessarily. I mean, Not I'm necessarily. years old, and I'm making seventy grand a year right now. So what? Doing what? Kids, what? what? So what? What year old do you know that? Well, that Eddie, everyone is working in construction. At which I'm is, not doing construction. What are you doing? I'm sitting in an office, and then I work for insurance companies. You know, you bring in your car. That needs repairs. I'd sit there, write an estimate on it, push it through the shop. Yeah, and you think that's a guaranteed career for the next twenty years? Have you, have you ever heard of a company called AIG? Ever yeah. hear of any of the financial companies out there that have gone under, been forced to merge, all the layoffs? What makes you think you're going to have that job for twenty years? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the same the thing. That, the same thing. Around. You know what makes you think that? The same stupidity that made you think you could have sex without a condom and get away with it. Well, you know, there's school for the trade that I'm in right now, and I, I go to school every year for it. You know, you got to stay current on it. I mean, it just isn't – you're not just throwing in the seat, and there you go. You I don't care. You can, go to, you can go – look, people at McDonald's go to Hamburger University, all right? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the fact that you go for retraining doesn't mean anything. If your company goes broke like AIG, if your company uh, merges or goes under, uh, you're toast. You just moved to another insurance company. Oh, that's all. With high unemployment right now and a recession, sure, you just moved to another company. You are still a little boy, Ryan. You still are not mature, and you still are making bad decisions. Well, I don't think I am. I think I'm doing Of course really well you don't. Uh, and so did the 10-year-old who tried to drive a bus. He thought he was doing a good job, too, right before he drove into someone else's car. Well... I don't know what to say about that, but I could say I'm doing good for myself. 
Uh, yeah, well, again, just because you're doing well today doesn't mean you'll be doing well in five years. Uh, without a college degree, this is as far as you're going. Well, I don't know. I know you know what it is. It is what it is, and you are what you are, and we know what that is. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, I work at a, I'm a provider in one of these free clinics, and I see these girls you're talking about every single day. It is so easy to get birth control. There's lots of free programs out there, but a lot of these girls just don't. Uh, you know, I use your logic, you know, like, well, if you have unprotected sex and you're trying to get pregnant, you know, I've heard you say that before, and of course they all say no. Um, but I uh, had a good case today. I had a girl, 17 years old, pregnant with her new boyfriend of two months, who, of course, didn't use a condom. Um, and she was crying to me because she couldn't afford $45 for some medication that her insurance wouldn't cover. And so I asked her flat out, how are you going to be able to afford, you know, when your baby gets sick or, you know, what are you going to do? And she's totally clueless, totally clueless. Of course. And, uh, you know, a lot of these girls, too, that I see Hispanic, nothing against Hispanics, but they all cry the Catholic flag. But, you know, if they're Catholic, then they shouldn't be having premarital sex either. If you're Catholic, the only sex you're allowed to have is your priest diddles you as an altar boy. And that's <laughs> all the sex you're allowed. You know, and the thing is, is uh, I think a lot of it just has to do with the fact that, you know, it's really easy to get free stuff. You know, these girls, they come in, they get free insurance. The kids get free insurance, they get welfare, they get a school bus to pick them up, take them to school, you know, while they watch their babies, drop them back off at home after they're done. It's it's absolutely insane. And for you guys out there that aren't using condoms, trust me, you should definitely be using them because I see you idiots every day in my office scratching your heads wondering what you're going to do. And, uh, you know, if you guys haven't been able to get the Hail Mary across, then I seriously suggest that when your girlfriend goes for an ultrasound, you go with her because I can't tell you how many times I've been in the office when somebody goes with their girlfriend to an ultrasound and then they find out that they're way more pregnant than they've been together. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Jeff, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Dahlia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Well, I, I was calling because, you know, um, you are young. I was 16. I got married. I never had sex before. I have my first child. And um, we got through a lot of you know, of economical things. My my husband was uh, going to be a medical doctor, but he quit because of the, uh, you know, so we have six children, but we went through. And six it's time that we have children? A child. Your husband wanted to be a doctor. What are you doing having six children? Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So every time that we have a child, you know, we have, we have uh, now, uh, we're talking about right now about um, 15 years later. You know, and I went to the school. I, I went to the nursing school. I got a good profession now. My husband is a technician, ultrasound technician, and the kids did okay. So every, every, every time that a child comes to this world, it comes from God. No, and it comes from you having sex without a condom or without birth control. It's okay. What do you mean it's okay? Yeah, because you get married and you have all the children. Were you were married at 16? Were you married at 16? Yes, I was. Were you married before you got pregnant? Uh, no. So did God knock you up? No. I mean, I got married. So what were you I... doing having sex at 16 if you're so religious? Well, we wanted to get married. Yeah, but, why, but you couldn't get married, so why were you having sex at 16? No, I was not. I, How did you I get pregnant married, without having then... sex? I got married, and then, um, you know, I have our first child one year later. But you told me, you just told me that you were you got pregnant before you got married. No, no, I did not. I did not. All right. I say that we got married, and then we have all these children. And when the children come to this world, you know, they are, it's okay. It's okay with you. Well, um... You know, there's a reason why poverty exists in so many countries. And it's because people in the, I don't know what country you're from, but there are many countries that are in poverty. And the reason is because people think like you. Well, nobody has a right to, you know, decide 
if you if your child what is going to be or what you know children that have been nobody born has a right poverty. to decide what children that have been born in poverty they are already doing great so you never many know of them child. many of them continue to repeat the cycle of poverty how do you think we get impoverished countries in the first place People in poverty continue to have too many children that they can't afford, who then, when they grow up, have too many children that they can't afford, who then grow up and have too many children they can't afford. Well, you know, you know, we can have children, whatever it is, they come with God's blessings, and they're always going to find out something to eat and something to dress on that. Well, you don't, don't, don't assume that. Everybody are. doesn't. Everybody does it. By the way, here we are in a country where a child could grow up to be anything. But if a child doesn't grow up in poverty, the odds of that child growing up to be the president of the United States, well, the odds of that child growing up to be uh, a doctor or a lawyer or an architect or something respectable go down. Well, all my children were born here in America. All my six children were born here. Yeah, and? So... So, you know, every time that we have a child next year... So, uh, when, you, when your oldest oh, you child turned 16, did you did you want that child to get married and start having kids? Uh, listen, each child comes with his own blessings from well, God. Well, I ask you no a question. So, yeah, all right, I understand that. So, so when your child, the one you had at 16, turned 16 four years ago, uh, did yes. you want that kid to get married and have kids? No, you know what? Why not? My first, my first child next year is going to be a doctor. Well, why didn't you say, hey, you're 16, it's time to have babies? And then my daughter, who, she was 17 when she got married. She already had two kids now. Oh, boy. So, and she's doing fine. So she's you're a 30, so let's review, you're a 36-year-old grandmother. Yeah, I'm already a grandmother, too. At 36? Yes, yes. That's what they do in impoverished countries, darling. That, that, you know what? No, we are here, we are here. I We're understand, but you clearly, what, what, what impoverished country did you grow up in? Well, we are here in America. My I, kids grew up but here. you grew up in an impoverished country, didn't you? Well, I was not really poor over there. I was, you know, there is there is two kind of... of uh, I'm talking about the country itself. Yeah, okay. They are poor. I don't know what con I don't know what country it, it is. Listen, it doesn't matter what... All right, but you country. grew up in an impoverished country where people have the mentality you have. What I'm saying is that each child has a right to come to this world, and each child comes with a blessing, no matter what. That's going that's to find. that's look. That's your religious belief. He's we going, don't we don't all subscribe to the same religion you do. He's going to find his blessings from God. Again, that is your religious belief. We don't all agree with your religious beliefs. <laughs> I have no children. You don't have no children by design. Well, that's wrong because you're no, going to be lonely when you grow, when you get older. I'm not lonely at all. <laughs> One day you will. I've got plenty of young hot chicks who want to keep me company. Uh, well, you know what? Each child comes to this world. It has a plan from God. That, again, that is your religious belief. Everyone doesn't agree with what you believe. Well, all these, all these little, all these mothers that they bring a child to this world, they're all, they don't, don't worry about it because God will take care I'm of it. I'm worried them. about, no, but God doesn't take care of it. You know who takes because care of it? Never, you know who takes care of it? The, the, the state of California, the welfare department takes care of it. It isn't Amazing. God taking care of a lot of these kids. It's my tax dollars taking care of them. Well. Yeah, our taxes, but so yeah, well, so it isn't God, it. it's me. That does that make me God? Maybe I'm God. Well, okay. Okay, but... Uh, you know, because God okay. does not take care of these children. And, you know, my tax money takes care of these children. Okay. Right? So that's, that's good. So stop that's calling good. radio programs with this delusion that God is taking care of children. God is not taking care of children. The state of Nebraska is taking care of children. The state of California is taking care of children. Taxpayer money is taking care of children. God has nothing to do with it. God loves us so much that he will always take care of us. Oh, sure he does, by taking money out of my pocket and putting it into the pocket of your grandchildren or your children or whoever. Maybe. Yeah, maybe Bye -bye. my ass. Tom, 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 like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Tom Likas Show.
from Hollywood. It's Tom Likas at one 800 800 tom with shorter commercial breaks, more calls, woven through it faster. Oh, my God, I've got radio whiplash here. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. What is it with these people who have children and bring them to the safe haven? Dopes. Benny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Mr. Professor. First time, uh, long time, and uh, it's a pleasure, as you know. Thank you, Benny. So, uh, just wanted to say a few things. Um, first off, I didn't know you speak Chinese. Uh, you did very well with that girl. Secondly, I see why you have talk to people like that that are a waste of airtime because uh, you show how uh, mentally impaired they are. Well, I, I said these are dopes, and now you have to hear the dopes play out. Uh, exactly, and you know you're playing them like uh, checkers while they're playing. You're playing them like chess while they're playing checkers. Ah. Anyway. Just wanted to say that, uh, I guess I have a lot to say. I just want to say, uh, you know, these guys obviously haven't been paying to you because, you know, you tell them to throw the hell Mary if they are dumb enough to get a girl pregnant. And, uh, they don't, obviously they don't because they're uh, quote unquote in love. Um, I guess they're in love with losing their money, right? Exactly. Uh, secondly, I realized, uh, that girls, too, you know, if they have some guys that are in puppy love and they happen to get pregnant, that could throw the hell Frank or hell Mary themselves. Well, I think, you know, again, I, I've been talking about this for so long. So many of these people just have empty lives that they want to fill with. They don't even know what they're doing. They Well, maybe if I have a baby, maybe if I'm in love, my life will be fulfilled. I will feel fulfilled. Come on. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like, they're trying to fulfill something just like when they buy a nice car or house. You know, they're not happy, so they're going to feel retarded, and the kids are going to have bad parents, and it's a never-ending cycle. Well, and it is a cycle, too. Yeah, 30, 36 year old grandmother. 36-year-old grandmother from Bolivia calling it. 36! <laughs> yeah, kills the new milk, but I definitely would uh, kill myself if, if I, I... I'd rather shoot myself than deal with her. Oh, my God. Uh... Right, right. Uh, you know, and also, finally, I'd like to end with this. Uh, you know how Richard Karaoke has Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yes. I think you should make a book called uh, Dumb Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Ross on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going, man? Great. What's with all these kids calling up wanting to have kids when they're young, man? That's pretty crazy. It's insane. I know. I should know. I'm one. You know, back in 1979, I had a, I was 14 years old, and I met a girl, and we had a kid, and it was really rough raising her. But as you know, back then, they didn't really teach you all that kind of stuff. It was kind of hush-hush. And uh, we didn't go on welfare. We didn't do anything. We raised the kid ourselves, got an education, and everything turned out really well so far. But we were the lucky ones. I have an idea that, you know, most kids, if they have kids today, the parents should be responsible for them, not welfare or anything else like that. I know my parents said, hey, we ain't going to play. You better get it. We ain't, we're not going to pay. You better get a job. And that's basically what me and her mom did, and we raised our kid. My kid graduated with a 4.0 from, or from, uh, from high school and a 4.0 from college also on a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And she didn't have a baby until she was 28. That's a good thing. So, see, that's how, you know, from coming from that, from that type of thing, I made sure that my daughter didn't do that, told her all the hard troubles that it was, how, how rough it was, all the stigma that's put to the side of it, especially back then. Nowadays, it's almost celebrated to have a kid when you're young. Back then, they wanted to take your kid away and hide him from you, you know what I mean? Well, it's, uh, by God, it's uh, celebrated on reality shows and gossip shows and, uh, you know, Jamie Lynn Spears, baby bump, ooh, you know, I mean. Yeah, what, what's up with that? Well, you know, well, at least she has the money to support it, but a lot of the kids out there don't have the money, you know, to do that, and their parents don't have the money, but they count on the wel welfare. You get third and fourth generation of kids doing this stuff. And I know, you know, when I was younger, I said, that's it, you know, you you did it, you're going to make sure none of your kids do it, that's for darn sure, you know what I mean? 
And that's where we're at right now. My daughter actually just had a baby uh, uh, a couple months ago, a couple days before my birthday, and everything's good because she's able to support it. She can do everything on her own, and, you know, she's 28 years old, so that's cool. But I say to all the kids out there, man, don't do it. It's too much hassle. So much time you're going to lose partying with your friends while everybody else is going out partying. You'll be saying, sorry, i got to go to work. You know, and that's what happened to me until, you know, later on in life and everything got a lot better. But it's really rough out there. And I say these kids don't do it. And then you're a 44-year-old grandfather. Yeah, now I'm a 44-year-old grandfather. And it makes me feel old now. And I say, don't call me grandpa. No. (laughs) (laughs) 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Michael on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Um, well, I have a pretty interesting story. I was dating a girl for about uh, three or four years and had an affair with her mother on a Halloween party night. Got the mother pregnant. Uh, the mother lied uh, you to didn't have, no, no, First of all, you didn't have an affair on Halloween party night. Uh, you, you nailed her. Yes, I nailed her, exactly. How old is your girl? She was at the time 23. How old is her mom? She was probably a 40-year-old MILF, probably 40, 42, I'm not sure. All right. And this was and, Halloween of this year? No, no, no. This was about uh, four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. All right, then what happened? Then she lied to her daughter, and uh, she said that it was by some guy that she was dating. And then um, the daughter found out one day through a text message and uh, left me, and she's still living with her mom and her brother. <laughs> now, do you see this child? No. No, I don't. Do you have any desire? Uh, no. I know I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Holy, exactly. Do, you, do you ever hear from this woman? Uh, no, not not at all, actually. She got a restraining order on me. A restraining and, order? Yeah, yeah. And I actually had to transfer a lot of my assets to a different country because I had some money left over from my parents, and she couldn't get anything from that, so she just eventually gave up and didn't do anything else. So she was trying to come after you for child support? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah. So, um, can you take me out Kobe style? Let's see if we can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 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 We just barely got it in, for oh. God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.